Man, God is so good. He's already answered many prayers. Y'all know that. Already he's answered many prayers. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, he's an awesome God. And that song my wife was singing just confirmed the word of what I'm fixing to preach. And uh, I love to preach this too. It's something you need to all remember and comfort each other with this holy word. And what I want to tell you too is I preached this this morning tonight. We'll talk about the other part of it. We're going to talk about uh, the rapture of our Lord Jesus, uh, the rapture of us, our Lord Jesus coming this morning. And tonight we're going to talk about the second advent of his coming and setting his feet down upon this earth. So if you want to know the difference of these two, come tonight and you'll hear that one. This morning I'm going to uh, uh, reveal to you what he has for us this morning. It's in, it's in God's holy word, by the way. And uh, you can just get in his word <coughs> and see it. His word is so powerful. Amen. And... Uh, You need to comfort one another because he is coming. He's coming. I truly believe that. And I believe he's coming in our lifetimes. I truly believe that too. Like Sandra said a while ago, sometimes the people say, well, I wish you wouldn't come right now. <laughs> Maybe they're not ready. You got, if you're ready to go, you, you welcome the time our Lord's fixing to come. Amen. Praise God. And uh, let's just look and see what he has. We're going to talk about, you know, we're going to talk about the rapture. The word rapture is not in the Bible, but there's a word in the Bible because say it call, it's C-A-U-G-H-2. It means called up yonder to meet him in the air. Amen. And we're going to look at that today. And we're going to see uh, what God has in store for us. So much wonderful things he has in store for us. I want to tell you this. I'm going to be ministering this morning on the rapture, taking us out of here. And then this uh, tonight I'll be, uh, uh, and, and, and the rapture is talking about our Lord Jesus will come personally in the air and call us to be with him. Tonight I'm going to be talking about the second advent. He will personally come to earth with his saints to reign for eternity. Okay. That's the two differences we're talking about here today, but we're going to focus on the rapture this uh, uh, this uh, morning because, you know, we're going to be gone. Christians are going to be gone in America, and it's going to devastate America because there's a lot of Christians in America, praise God. There's a lot of Christians in the whole world. Can you imagine what it's going to do to the economy and things that's going to collapse, and they're going to say, well, them Christians was right. Find me a Bible. We need to start planting Bibles everywhere. I, plant, I got Bibles planted down at my house. In rooms, I got Bibles planted so my family, they come and I'm gone. Me and Becky has gone. Uh, they can start looking around and the word that tells the truth is going to be there. Amen. Let's go a little bit further. They plant Bibles in Petra, by the way. Let's look and see what his holy word is. so wonderful. I, I just love his holy word. You know, Revelation, man, that's powerful. Revelation is so powerful. I love Revelation. I guess one day I need to break down and preach on it again. I mean, teach on it again. I've, I've done it before. It's just an awesome uh, uh, thing to teach on. I just love it so much. There's so much in it. It's packed full, but it tells you what's going on today and what's going to happen. It's a revelation of it. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. That's a thousand year millennium reign right there, isn't it? Now, I want to tell you something. Y'all see these folks it's talking about right here? It's talking about uh, uh, the people that, uh, that are left here after we get raptured out of here. And uh, they stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ and they don't submit to the Antichrist. The, we... When the Antichrist, Antichrist comes on the scene, we will not be present. We will be raptured out of here. He's coming from Syria. I truly believe he's, he's alive right now. I believe that. But I'm going to tell you this. He won't step on the scene until the church is gone. In Revelation uh, 4, uh, from Revelation 4 on, you'll see the church is gone. Okay? 
And uh, I can get deeper in that too, you know. The bride of Christ, I was discussing this with a man the other day. I got to get back with him. We got to go a little deeper in that discussion. But I'm here to tell you, you know, the, the, the church is uh, the bride that's going to corporately be. Uh, but let me tell you what the true bride of Christ is. The true bride of Christ is New Jerusalem. The angel showed New Jerusalem as the bride of Christ. And we, the church, which will be called up, not Israel, we, the church, will be called up, okay? Israel's not the bride of Christ. That's from my studying and looking, and I won't get into that right now, but I want to tell you, I got to read that scripture, though. I think I need to read that scripture. It tells us, just to confirm exactly what it said there, and... Uh, God's so wonderful. And uh, I, I want to read that, that scripture. It's going to be, the bride of Christ is going to be New Jerusalem. And uh, we can see it in, uh, I believe it's Revelation 2 2. I want to read that real quick. Just to confirm what I just said. I always want to get in it uh, deeper and see. Well, maybe it's not 2 2. No, that's not it. Let's look at uh, da, 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 da. Nine. Let's look at nineteen seven. Maybe that's it. I can get sidetracked a little bit occasionally. <laughs> Let's look at nineteen seven and see what it says. I believe that's one I want. Uh, praise God. He's an awesome God. That's not it either. Huh? Is it? Yeah, 19 verse 7. Uh, the Word of God says, let's see what it says. Right. Uh, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he saith unto me, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he that saith to me, These are the true sayings of of God. Now I want to tell you something. Uh, this is the verse I want right here. Verse chapter 21, verse 9. I want to read this to you. I want you all to look at this. Verse 9, 21. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, Come hither and I will show thee the bride of the Lamb's wife. Y'all see that? This angel is going to show him the bride of uh, the Lamb's wife. Look at here. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. He showed me that great city, Jerusalem. The holy city, New Jerusalem, is the bride of Christ. But we as the body of Christ, will be dwelling in New Jerusalem continually. Amen? I got a little sidetracked there, but I want you to know that. Let's go a little bit further right here and see what uh, the Lord says right here. And I saw thrones that set upon them, and judgment was given to them, and I saw souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, for the Word of God. You love Jesus enough to, to if they're going to cut your head off, and you're going you're gonna to still follow him? You got to make up that decision, you yay or nay. You either in or you out because it's, we got persecution coming everywhere. That's okay. We win. Read the back of the book of the Bible. The books we win. Amen. Look here. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, or received his mark upon their foreheads. Uh, that's the Antichrist, 666, the mark of the beast, all of that stuff uh, coming uh, about this world. They're making little chips and stuff right now that they can tell you everything about yourself right now. Don't take it. That's the way I believe. Don't take it. Now, I want to tell you something. Let's go right here and look a little bit uh, 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 closer and see. And they live for, and neither his image, neither had to receive the mark. Did you know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar made this giant tower of gold, an um, image of him, and he said, you're going to bow down and worship that. What if somebody come in here and told you you're going to bow down and worship this uh, uh, antichrist demon of hell that's going to be over there in, in Israel for three and a half years and, 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 and bring 
uh, turmoil upon this earth like never before and you had to bow down before him or you're going to be killed. Could you accept that? But just think if you kill for the Lord, you're going to immediately be with God Almighty. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and, and Abednego, you know what they said? We're not bound down to that king. We worship God. Our belief is to God, one God, one true God. We're going to bow down. We're going to worship him only. We're not bound down and worship no image of a man. And they and he said, oh, oh, Nebuchadnezzar got so mad, he said, I want you to get my people to build the furnace, and I want it seven times hotter than it has been before. And I want you to throw these men in that furnace, okay? So let me tell you what happened. Even Nebuchadnezzar's men that was going to throw them in the furnace got killed. It was so hot. They throwed them in the furnace, and old Nebuchadnezzar himself looked in there and said, I see, didn't we throw three men in the furnace? I see four in there now. Looked like the son of man. His name is Jesus. He was in there with him. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, they got them out of there, and they weren't singed nowhere because they stood for the Lord thy God. We got to be able to have uh, uh, that same kind of commitment with God. You don't ever know when it could come to you. And uh, But we need to be ready. Look at these saints that lost and was beheaded. They were under the throne hollering, How long, how long, O oh Lord, till you avenge us? God is fixing to do that. Amen. Let's look right here and, 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 and check it, though. The rapture, when we get raptured out of here, we're going to be with God for seven and a half years, and we're going to be up there with him, and, uh, uh, and we're going to come back with him to help him rule and reign the millennium reign for a thousand years. And uh, the saints are going to do that. Let's look right here and see what the word says, uh, verse uh, 5. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. We're talking about the first resurrection here, but now the second resurrection is the dead in hell. At the end of the thousand-year millennium reign, the second resurrection, the dead that's in hell, will be raised up and judged at the great white throne judgment. Let's look right here and see God's word. And when the thousand years are ended, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to see nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is, is, this, is the sand of the sea. That's pretty powerful, ain't it? That's a lot of people, the sand of the sea, don't you think? Let's look and see what it says. Uh, and they went up uh, uh, the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and beloved city. Fire came, came down out of heaven and devoured them. You know, the devil's going to be chained up during the millennium reign for a thousand years. One angel with one chain is going to get this dude, put him in hell for for a long time, and he'll be loosed at the end of that millennium reign. Some of you know. He'll be loose for a season because there'll be still a lot of people of rebellious motives uh, on this earth that hadn't uh, 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 submitted to our Lord Jesus Christ, and they're going to, uh, uh, they still want to rebel against their Lord Jesus Christ and us saints, okay? So Satan's going to go around doing his jawing and deceiving everybody, and when he does that, all these dummies are going to follow him again. And they're going to go down there and they're going to uh, encamp around new, the holy city Jerusalem where us saints is at in there. And he thinks he's going to do something. And all of a sudden, God Almighty from heaven will send fire down and destroy them immediately. And then they'll be cast into the lake of fire for eternity. That's pretty heavy. And then this old earth's going to come, be, uh, come past the way the Lord wants it uh, the way he wanted it in the first place before Adam and Eve messed up. Let's go a little bit further and look. And the devil that saved them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beasts and the false prophets are, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's pretty heavy, don't you think? Tormented day and night forever. Y'all see that? Look at here. And I saw a great white throne judgment. He sat upon it uh, uh, whose face of the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened and this is the book of life and the dead were judged out of these things which were written in the books according to their works. 
Now, this is a great white throne judgment. God's got the books. He's going to open the books, and they're not going to be found in the books, uh, and they're going to be cast in hell. That's the ones that's in hell waiting for that judgment of that second resurrection. Remember, we're going in the first resurrection. I'm a little jealous there because I can show you another resurrection in the Word of God. And uh, his name was what? Enoch. Amen. He got uh, resurrected a long time ago. Let me get back up here where I'm supposed to be and get my scriptures out here. Amen. We've got some good stuff coming up, facts about God too. Amen. But Enoch walked with God. You know why? God took him. He went out of here. Well, he's going to take us too. Even if we in the grave, if you're a child and a believer, you're going to be taken up. And if you're not in the grave and you're a believer, you're going to be called up alive. Can you dig it? I always told Roy and a bunch of them, I'm going on the second load. Amen, B.R.? See, the second load is we who are alive will be called up yonder. But the ones dead in Christ first will be called out of the graves and they're going up first. Let's look and see what, uh, and I saw the dead great and small and, and the books were opened and the book of life and the dead were judged out of those books which were written in the books according to their works. You know, it's a shame, by the way, you and I are going to get judged by Jesus when we get up in heaven. Did you know that? I was talking about the, to that to the Lord the other day. Lord, I thought all this stuff is washed in, washed in the blood. Amen. I don't want to go back in some of that stuff I did. It was horrible, you know. I don't want to think about all them things and all that. But I tell you right now, God's going to judge us about things that we've done down here in this old body. But guess what? All of those things that you've done, maybe you didn't do, you didn't witness this person or do this or do that, they'll be burned up. But you will not lose your salvation. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. For that mercy and that grace. Look at right here uh, in the book. Uh, it talks about it. And uh, the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and, the, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to the works. Death and hell delivered up uh, those dead bodies to be judged before God. And death and hell was cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. You know, one of the biggest curse to mankind is what? Death. Don't you hate that? Don't you hate that so much? But it's going to be gone. The curse of death is going to be gone, y'all. Let's look right here in 15, see what it says. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is what Jesus said. I believe what Jesus said. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in me, believe also in him. In my Father's house are many mansions. Were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again. Is he coming again? I will come again and receive you unto myself, and that where I am there ye may be also. He is coming again. Hallelujah. Praise God. And uh, let's, you really want to get deep. Let's look in this Thessalonians and see what it says. It's this point blank right here. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then which, which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this they say unto you, the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So our brothers and sisters uh, that's members of this church and family that died as a believer is in the graves right now. They're going to be called up first. Look at here. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Do y'all see that? The dead in Christ. They're going to raise up first. So our brothers and sisters and families that's died in the Lord is in the grave. They're going to be raised up first. They're going to get that immortal body like Jesus. Amen. Look at here. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught, C-A-U-G-H-T, up but together with them in the clouds and meet the Lord in there, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now that tells me if we with him up there and he comes back, we're going to be with him. That's what I see. Amen. 
Let's go a little bit further. I like this. This is good. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You and I need to comfort one another with these words. Amen. He's coming back. He's coming back. Hallelujah. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. Look here. Let me let me read this scripture to you right here. I looked up that word. It ain't a good word. <laughs> Who shall change our vile body? It ain't good. Flesh ain't good. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body? Who's that? The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Man, this old flesh ain't no good. But we're going to get a new body, and it's going to be like the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. It ain't going to have no problems like it has down here under the curse. Let's look right here in the, in the Colossians. Christ shall appear. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. So that where he's at, we're going to be with him, ain't we? Amen. Look right here. Oh, yeah, I like this one right here. I, I talked about it earlier a while ago. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God what? Took him. Man, I've always uh, been a little upset. I ain't upset I'm happy for Enoch, but he's up there in heaven, been up there about 5,000 years, and I truly believe him and Elijah will be the two witnesses will come back to this earth and uh, witness over in Jerusalem for three and a half years and, uh, and uh, pound the Antichrist a lot, and then they'll finally kill the two witnesses. Uh, they'll lay dead in the street for three days, uh, and then God Almighty will call them up, and the world's going to not be celebrating then. They're going to celebrate these two witnesses after they get killed because they, they call fire down and done all kind of things that uh, they them uh, unbelievers don't like. But I'm here to tell you, they'll die, lay in the street for three days, they'll celebrate, and then all of a sudden uh, they'll be raised up. Celebration's fixing the end. Think about it. And Enoch walked with God. He was not, but God took him. He's going to take us too, y'all. Did you know that? Now, he's not going to come down when he's going to shout. You've seen it. He's going to come in the clouds personally and shout, and uh, we're going to be, boom, out of here in a twinkle of an eye. I truly believe that. He won't come down to this earth then. He's going to take uh, us uh, out of here, and we'll be with him. And then we'll come back with him to the second advent. We'll talk about some of that tonight, exactly what's going to happen there. Let's look at this other scripture right here. We see that in Revelations 21, 4. You got to be an overcomer, y'all. We get tempted sometimes. But you just stand your ground because God said he'd be. We look here. For God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. How many can get into that? How many can get into no sorrow, no pain? I can get into that. I can, uh, no crying, no tears. I tell you, it's going to be, I'm looking forward to those days. Amen. Look right here. I want y'all to uh, look at this scripture right here. We got to be an overcomer. Amen. The word of God says, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and shall be my son. We got to endure to the end, y'all, and it's going to get tough sometimes. I think it's going to get tougher than ever before, but we got to stand because we have the king that's in us, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So we just got to stand, amen? Just make up your mind. You're going to stand, and you're going to do it with his holy word, and he's going to help you. Everything you need is right in here. Everything mankind needs is in God's holy word. Now, I want you to, this last verse, I want you to check it out. For what is our hope, our joy, a crown of rejoicing? How many wants that hope? How many wants that uh, joy? How many wants that crown of rejoicing? Or even, yea, in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. I want that hope. I want that joy. I want that crown. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want uh, you to tell somebody right now, he's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Hallelujah. Give him praise. We can comfort one another with these words. He is coming back.
I'm so excited about that as we minister. You know, it's like every day, Lord, when you're coming, I'm ready now. <laughs> you know? And uh, I've ministered this uh, message a lot of times, you know, but it gets gooder and gooder because he's coming back, Mason. <laughs> he's coming back, y'all. We can encourage each other with these words that he's coming back. You need to do that this week and it builds your strength and, and, and we got to endure to the end, right? In other words, you endure today and go back out in the world, you dead, baby. But you got to end do. You go back out in the world. You stay with the Lord as a believer and read and pray and study and stay close because he's coming back. I'm going to ask every head bowed, please. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in here this morning, you want to be saved, raise your hand. I'll pray for you. Anybody in here this morning uh, want to rededicate their life to the Lord, raise your hand, and I'll pray for you right now if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. Let's pray right now, too. I want to pray for these people on the Internet. I pray in the holy name of Jesus that God will get a hold of you folks on the Internet. Uh, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I pray today you will make the decision to know who he is in Jesus' name because he loves you so much. Lord, I pray for everybody that's represented in here uh, this morning in a special way. I pray, God, uh, and I bind the devil from stealing what was accomplished here this day in any way in Jesus' holy name. And, Lord, we love you and we praise you, God, and I pray, God, uh, that you'll go with each one that's represented here today. I pray I speak blessings over everyone in here today in a special way, God. I lift them up to you. Let us have a great week, God, this week. And, Lord, in Jesus' name, bring us back tonight and let us hear more of your precious and holy word, God, to glorify you. And everybody said amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for being here. God bless you. It's good to be in God's house. His word is so good. Amen.